I injured injured my back. Now that's why I when I installed the seat. So we took off to Daytona. It looks like it's daylight, but it's literally one o'clock in the morning. The tail of a seat, a motorcycle seat. How would you call it? A tail of a motorcycle seat. Hey guys, welcome back. Just got back a few days ago. I had an interesting, very interesting flight I want you to see. We took off at night and there was a sun, sunrise, then a sunset, then we landed, then another sunrise. Like I saw in a during of, duration of a flight of 12 hours, I saw two sunrises, one sunset, and just, just take a look. We're pushing back. Holy shift. Interesting fact. Uh, we took off, it was night. But we're going very far up north. So uh, during the summer in the North Pole, it's day. <laughs> Stop. It's daytime uh, all day long, pretty much. There's no, there's no night. 24 hours of uh, light. So now we're actually, as we're traveling for closer to the North Pole, we actually see the sunrise again. And once we get closer to New York, it's gonna set again. And then uh, we're gonna land in the morning in New York and about an hour after we land, there's gonna be another sunrise. So in one flight, we saw two sunrises and one sunset. And there's also a moon out there. So there's a moon and we saw two sunrises in one flight. It looks like it's daylight, but it's literally one o'clock in the morning because we're so uh, far north. So we actually see the sun that shines all day long. Actually. Soon I'm gonna go to sleep. We're taking shifts. So how, how cool is that? This video, I actually want to talk, I want to tell you a tale of a motorcycle seat. Background, when I had, let me just get my stool over here. Oh, just before I even get into it, I just wanted to show you. Uh, yesterday, I had, like, I, I couldn't, couldn't go riding and I just had to stay home. So I uh, took the time to set up the garage. Ever since we moved about a month, a month and a half ago, I didn't really have enough time and energy to set up and there were still boxes all over so i got i, I spent like five four or five hours unboxing everything and hanging stuff so for the holy shift uh holy shift garage got all the bikes 2022 royal enfield classic 350 my 2022 fxl rst lowrider st gray ghost that you all know and the new acquisition the 1989 goldwing gl 1500 
And I set up all, all the stuff over here. Not too many boxes. All the boxes over here are like parts that came off the bike and stuff like that. Little work area. My tour packs, racks, Beyond Riders, my sponsors. Set this all up and my toolbox. As you see outside, it's shitty, shitty weather. So I said it, it should be a great, a great opportunity to tell you the story of the seat. The bike before my low rider ST, which was actually my first Harley, was the Electroglide. Electroglide Standard 2020 that I bought and customized it completely. The channel was new and beginning and time got, as time went by, Ad Van Black reached out to me and we started working together, which was great because they have lots and lots of color matched bags, parts, fenders, tail, pe tail pieces, everything. And they started making also seats. They sent me a seat, a very nice seat that they had. And I installed it on the uh, on the electric glide at the time. And just before, like literally two or two, three days before we went to our Daytona ride, that's when I, inst when I installed the seat. So we took off to Daytona. That was two Daytonas ago. So it was about a year and a half ago. And we did a very interesting uh, content for the first time. That was my first Daytona. We rode about 500, 500, 600 miles to uh, the car trail, the car train, I forgot what it's called. Uh, it's the train that takes your, ca your car or your motorcycle with you. So we rode like 500, 600 miles all the way to the beginning of it. And then we loaded our bikes up and took the train all the way to uh, pretty much close enough to Daytona. And during that ride, uh, it was uh, on, a, on a new seat. The seat wasn't broken in yet. That was a tough ride. There was a lot of rain at the time. It was kind of stressful and it, was, it wasn't it was too long, but it was, I think, uh, about a 10, eight or 10 hour ride. And then on the train itself, I think it was like 14, 14 or 16 hours. I don't recall. There were, there were, we sat on normal seats, which didn't recline that much. Good morning, guys. We're up. Sun is shining. Didn't get. We did get a, a, some sleep. Seats are designed exactly the wrong way. <laughs> like designed exactly to keep you up all night long. Whoever designed these seats should be fired. But I did get some. We did. I did get some sleep. I wasn't comfortable, but I slept. Bottom line: apparently, during the whole that whole trip, that whole way down, I injured injured my back. Now. The two, three days that we spent at Daytona itself at the rally, I was on my feet for 12, 14 hours every day at the booths, uh, riding and stuff. I didn't get much rest the whole day on our feet. The last day we were on our way to head back home, I started to feel my back hurting me. On the way back, we, we rode our bikes up to, I forgot where the entry point is, but again, that's where we met our uh, train, loaded the bikes, and then another... 12 hours, 12, 14 hours to, to the end of the journey where we were supposed to offload our bikes and ride the next morning, ride home. And already on the way back, when we got there already, I started to have strong backache with, I was popping Tylenols like, like candy. It was unbelievable. I thought that by the next morning, I'll be fine. We got into the hotels, checked in, and the guys went out for dinner. I, I just couldn't go to dinner. I just, I just preferred to stay to stay at the room to just to rest. Next morning, we wake up five o'clock in the morning and I'm in so much pain, I literally couldn't move. I, and then what do we do? It was uh, five or six of us. They had to go, We everybody had to go and there was no point for me. I said, I'm gonna stay. I'm literally gonna stay at the, at the hotel for another night or two. And then finally, after you know brainstorming of our options, I called the tow truck and had the bike towed with me on painkillers all the way back home i never posted it i didn't wanna you know some things i just don't i decide not to post like a little bit personal you know things that i don't always feel comfortable posting but anyway that incident really left a scar and uh i healed after like two three weeks apparently it was a pinched sciatic nerve that never happened to me and it was an aggravated nerve uh, 
that I guess from the ride and from not resting and from the, the train ride, it got injured and I got like very bad inflammation over there. So that whole occurrence, riding on a new seat, not broken in, really put a little, you know, uh, a scar in my in my uh, psyche. A few months after that, I uh, got the Lowrider ST, and I was when I was on uh, the search for, you know, a new seat because the stock seat on the Lowrider ST, well, is meh, you know, meh at the best. I said I don't care anything about looks at this stage. All I care about, you know, is the comfort. If I'm going to be riding the bike a lot, and my back is. Uh, sensitive because that's what i was you know thinking after after that long trip to daytona with the not with a seat that wasn't broken in i was like really concerned so i opted you know to get the most comfortable seat so i, I literally searched the whole market all uh, all uh manufacturers all options and the common sense said to get the widest seat possible so you get you know a lot of support for your back lower back and your butt. Additionally, I was always with the previous bike riding with a backrest, so I had to get a backrest. Searched, searched, searched. Oh, before I go there, I also knew that one of the things that I want to be doing, I love the solo seat look. So I was literally looking for a, a seat that would be solo for 90 95% of the time, and then for the very rare occasion where I do ride two up which I actually never have uh, ridden on this bike two up, I will add a pillion uh, seat. So I pretty much was looking for a solo seat with an option for a two up seat, like a, a little cushion in the back uh, as a pillion seat. And the only one that had, the only company at the time that had a really good and, and wide seat was a uh, Mustang seat, Mustang seat. That's why I bought, I bought at the time the Mustang seat. It was the solo option with the backrest and the pillion the pillion attachment that goes in the back i didn't care about looks all i cared about a wide seat and boy that seat i rode with it for almost a year a year and i really enjoyed it really comfortable seat wide good support nice backrest and uh i really enjoyed it here let me show you the seat right now i took it it's not on the bike uh, last few months so this is the Mustang seat that I was using. I think it's called the Tourer. Extremely wide. It's got like 15 inch from one side to the other. Gives you great, great butt support, lower back support, nice, great cushioning. And it had obviously the backrest, the backrest right there. And for uh, two up riding, I had this. This was the two up, the two up setup for Anyway, great seat, I love it. But then I started to care more about the looks and said, I wanna give a try, I wanna give Saddleman a try. And I reached out to Saddleman, and Saddleman were nice enough to send me the step up, the Saddleman step up with a great back support. Obviously there's no, in this case, there's no a backrest, but I said, I'll give it a try. I took the tuck and roll design. John had this on his uh, road glide, this uh, tuck and roll design. And at the end, at the, at the back of this kind of stitching. Now, since I got it, I put around, you know, a thousand miles since I pretty much started riding it. And uh, I can tell you that all my worries and concern about my pinched nerve or my sciatic nerve didn't happen. Like there was no reoccurrence uh, for that uh, for that event. And I've been on this bike already a thousand miles. The longest I was is about 12 hours. We did about 500 miles a month or two ago with this seat and it was great. First of all, the cushioning, I guess because of the design, the tuck and roll, it gives it a little bit, a little bit more, you know, cushioning over here. So it feels really good. And my need for a back, uh, backrest, non-existent. I mean, I, I just, I don't need the backrest at this stage. So after riding this seat for about a thousand miles, the Saddleman, the Saddleman step up, tuck and roll design in all black, it's really cool. And I think the main, the main thing about this seat that it looks really, really good. It looks great. That's all I can say about the, the Saddleman seat and the story of 
why at the time I got the Mustang seat. And now I'm with this saddleman, step up, and I think it looks really, really good. What do you guys think? Tell me what you think before, uh, what it looked like with the Mustang seat, and what it looks like now. Continues the line, then up, and then goes tapers down. Looks nice. Let me do a walk around. And yeah, by the way, the seat is for sale. Hit me up. Go to my website and uh, write me an email. Let me know if you're interested. Great condition, as you see. All, I can only say good things about it. If a backrest is what you want and great, great comfort, a solo option with a two-up pillion attachment, Mustang Touring, it's a, great, uh, it's a really great seat for you. So, guys, that's it for now. How do you like my new setup? I'm loving it. <laughs> Look at the rain, man. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for watching, guys. I'm Sandy. You're watching Holy Shift till the next video, guys. Peace out.